In this tutorial, I'm going to look at adding subdivisions to our isometric grid and exploring how you can work with multiple planes to construct a 3D model of a building. I still have the app and documents set up as they were at the end of the previous tutorial. So now I'm going to define this floor pan a little more by adding some thickness to the walls and I'm going to do this on a second layer so that I can keep this outline as a reference. So if I add a new layer, I'm going to call this floor plan. I'm going to switch my grid back on so that I can work with it to create this floor plan. So I'm going to use command and the quotation marks to set it back up. If I zoom into this section here, I'm going to make sure that this wall shows the thickness it would be if built. I'm going to be working with the pen tool and I'm going to work in polygon mode and I'm actually going to be tracing this line identically at the moment but at this point I want to create a thickness to the wall. The problem is the next snapping point is here and that's not particularly handy at the moment so what I can do is update the grid to add divisions between the spaces and that way I can snap to the, these divisions and create a thickness to the wall. And we can add these subdivisions from the view menu selecting grid and access manager. And from the divisions here we're going to set this to 10. If I press return you can see the subdivisions have been added and each of these is a millimetre in size. Now I can snap to each of these subdivisions as needed. So I'm going to make these walls two millimetres thick. And that's our first wall created here. Now here we have an external wall which we're drawing and making that two millimetres thick. But here we've got an inner wall. Again I'm going to make this two millimetres thick but I want to start it on this side of the wall. So I'm using just one subdivision and then take it one subdivision this side of the wall as well. So the thickness of the wall is consistent but it sits between this line here from the outline. And what I'm going to do is continue this process around each of the rest of the walls to complete the floor plan of my design. Now here's a little different because this internal wall connects up with the external wall if I had it sticking out halfway I would have a small corner created here. Now I don't want that to happen so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the full thickness on this line here so it's slightly different from the internal wall I did previously and you'll see what impact this has on this side of the wall when I get to it. Now here I made the mistake of not going far enough to this internal wall here. So if I zoom in, I can switch to the node tool by holding the command key down. And I can move the node to where I need it to be. And then continue drawing with the pen tool. And as you can see, as I'm coming along here, I can line this perfectly so we don't have the corner kink here. And now I can hide that grid again by using command and quotation marks and you can see our floor plan quite clearly, particularly if I switch off the outline. And that's our floor plan with the thickness of the walls defined. The gaps in the walls are the areas where there will be windows, plain openings or doors. And we'll get to those in the next tutorial. Now it's time to get into the really exciting part of the tutorial and we'll look at changing this floor plan into a full 3D isometric model. So I'm going to create a new layer and rename this model. So next I'm going to add a fill to all of these shapes which I have on my floor plan. I'm going to give it a dark grey colour and this helps to emphasise the walls as you can see. I'm going to duplicate this layer 
using command J and I'm going to move that into the model layer for reference like so. Now I'm going to drop the opacity of this floor plan to 50% by selecting it and then pressing 5 on the keyboard. I'm going to select the floor plan within the model and then I'm going to show the grid again by using command and the quotation marks. Now currently we've been only working in one plane on this isometric grid but we can use the other two planes as well. If we go to the view menu we can go to grid and axis manager and here we can select create plane set and when you select this it activates not only the first and second axis but the up axis as well. Now back on your document you can use the quotation marks to switch the axis you're working on. Again, snapping to this new axis will also occur because we have snapping on. I'm going to move this four floor plan layer and I'm going to move it up by three squares like so. I'm going to use the shift key, keep it in line, but you'll see that it snaps when it meets the grid. Already you can see how that 3D model is going to begin to look. In fact, this hasn't quite snapped properly, so I'm going to move it up slightly more. Perfect. Now I'm going to begin drawing these walls in here and I'm going to do so on a new layer. So if I create a new layer and I'm going to call it walls. But I'm going to place this underneath the current floor plan so that when I draw it, it will appear behind these walls. And to draw these walls, I'm simply going to use the pen tool in polygon mode. Now I'm going to start with the internal walls and build it up so the first wall I draw is the one furthest back in the plan. I'll then begin to build up the walls so that newer walls will overlap the older ones. So if I zoom in, I can then begin to create my walls. As you can see here, I'm positioning the wall on the inside of the floor plan that we've created. This is because it's an internal wall. I'm going to add a bit of colour to that as well so you can see it. I'll switch off the grid so you can see what it's beginning to look like. Now I'm going to continue adding these walls and build up the 3D model and I'm drawing them in exactly the same way as I've added the first one. Now here I need to switch planes because it's a bit confusing where I am. But here I can see this is the wall here that I'm working on so I've got the grid set up to suit my needs. Again I need to switch planes because I'm going to be drawing this internal wall here. So you simply use the quotation marks key to switch planes. And again for this wall, switching planes. Now I went slightly wrong there because I actually need to build it up here so that we've got a frame to work from. So again if I switch to the node tool using the command key I can mo move this node back here and here I can build the archway as was defined here in the plan. Again I've forgotten the door here so I can zoom in, select that and then modify it using the node tool. Switch planes. Back to the pen tool, I can carry on drawing. Now I'm going to draw an external wall here, so I'm going to use the outer edge of the walls to define it. And then you have our completed walls, external and internal. In the next part of this tutorial series, I'm going to redefine the tops of the walls and add door frames and windows. Thanks for watching.